It's been a long time since I showed any type of tutorial video on this channel, but I know a lot of people are buying Google TV or Hisense powered Google TVs, and you're wondering how does all this work? So in this video, I'm gonna walk you step by step how to set it up. We're also gonna go through some of the menu system and some of the options you have available and how to properly configure a gaming console. With that being said, let's get into it. So here's the welcome screen. As you can see, it comes in different languages, even here in the United States. You wanna go ahead and choose your language. You then wanna choose your region. And again, mine is set up as United States. Now we're gonna set it up with Google TV. And as you notice, there's a lot of applications down here. If I put in basic TV mode at the initial setup, you can scan for channels and do live TV. Plus you can use all your external devices. Now keep that in mind. You need to do that when you first plug it in. And if you don't, you have to reset the TV and start all over. Now there's two ways you can set this up. I do have the Google Home application and that's what I normally do. You would scan the QR code and then the Google Home application will set it up. If you look down here at the bottom, you can set it up with your remote control instead and that's what we're gonna do. Now the first thing you need to do is set up your Wi-Fi. Now I have two Wi-Fi's here in the studio. If you go 2.4 gigahertz, you will get a lot of range but it won't be as fast. If you go to five gigahertz, you will get less range, but it will perform faster on the internet. Once you select your Wi-Fi, go ahead and enter your Wi-Fi password. Once you enter your password, go ahead and press on done. Now the first thing the TV is gonna do is check for updates. I recommend you go ahead and update the television before you move forward. That way you don't have to do it later. Next, you wanna log in with your Gmail account. Now you'll get terms and conditions from Google. Make sure you read through everything and then press on accept. And if you plan on using voice command locally, you need to leave on local. Otherwise, you need to turn that off. You can also check off if you want your TV to help Google improve their services. Now for Google Assistant, you wanna go ahead and press OK. For me personally, I always allow it to search all the different applications. And next, you wanna go ahead and agree to activate voice match if you wanna use the voice commands. Now I already have that set up on my account, so I will not be using that. And I turn on personal results, but that's up to you. The last part, if you have any of these applications, you wanna hit the checkbox beside it so it can install it. If you don't, just hit confirm and it will not install those apps. You can manually do it later. Next, we're gonna pair the remote control by pressing home and back at the same time for about three seconds. Make sure you're close to the TV. And now the remote control is paired and you need this in order to use the Google voice commands because it works off Bluetooth. Now for local channels, if they're available in your area, you can just go ahead and put in a zip code. I'll just make up one here and then uh, hit OK and confirm. Now, I would say read through everything. You can skip it, but it might come up where it needs that permission to do certain things on the television, so I'll leave that up to you. And if you wanna cast your phone over to it, you can have the phone to turn the TV on. I'll go ahead and skip that because I won't be using it on this demo. And that's pretty much it, you're done. The last part it's gonna do is install the basic applications, and once that's done, you have access to the home screen. Now, when you get to the main Google home screen, you're gonna see a couple of options here. This is picks for you based off of content that you watch. You also can see a row of your applications. And then you'll see a row of built-in applications. To customize this, just press and hold the OK button on the remote and you'll get an option that says move. Now, I can move it where I want it, press OK again, and it'll stay there. Now, let's say I wanna uninstall something. If you get an application that you don't want, press and hold the OK button. And if you see right here where it says view details, that means that app can be uninstalled. If you don't see that option, then you will not be able to take that app off the TV. Once you select it, just go ahead and press uninstall, hit OK, and it'll remove it from your TV's list. Another feature here is called reorder. So if you go here and press on reorder, you can then press the application one time and you can move it where you want it. This is ideal if you have applications that you use on a daily basis, you wanna put those up front so whenever you go to the menu system that you'll see it right there on the front of your list. Now you'll see a couple of recommendations here on the TV screen and if you don't wanna use those, if you go down to the very bottom of the screen and hit manage services, you can then toggle off things that you don't wanna see. So you see the little checkbox. if you do wanna see them, you would turn it on and if you don't wanna see them, just turn them off. Now you do have live TV, so if you scan for live channels, they all will appear right here at the beginning, but this TV does have Google TV in it, so it will have these different applications that you can scan and watch local news and, and different TV shows on demand. 
Now keep in mind, this TV does not have a DVR in it, so anything that you want to watch, you'll have to flag it by hitting that little star right there. It'll add it to your favorites. And if you go to the top of the screen, that's where you'll find all your favorite channels. Now most Hisense televisions do have this operating system called Google TV. If you have Vita, it will not look anything like this. But once you log in, you can see all your different applications. And if you want to download an app, just press on it, press install at the bottom, and then you can do all the custom settings that I showed you. Now where you see library at the top, these are different things that you rent so you have easy access to it. And if we go over to the side, you'll see this gear. Next to the gear, you'll see your profile. If you press on it, you can then add other users' accounts. And this is ideal so your content will not get mixed up for anyone else. Now the last few things I want to show you in the operating system is that you can name your device so it's easier to find on your list, or you can just label it by wherever you put it in your home. If you plug an antenna into it, this is where you would scan for your channels, but I don't have antenna plugged into it. And on most Hisense TVs, if you go over here where it says audio output, this is where you can enable the eARC. So if you have a soundbar plugged into it, this will highlight and then you can choose your soundbar and begin to connect it. If you get a new Wi-Fi, you go into network and internet, you will find your Wi-Fi and then you would re-enter your password just in case you had a new account set up. If you go under apps and if you go to all apps, it shows how many megabytes they're being used. And if you need to install any of the applications, if they're available, you can do it right here under all apps. Now, I will tell you, if you see where it says uninstall updates, it means that that application cannot be removed, but you can disable it. But keep in mind, you will not get this storage back. It just disables it. Now, if you go down to another app like this one, now you see uninstall. I can press on that, and then I can manually uninstall it that way. And these are some things you can do when you first get your TV so you can clean it up and make sure that it doesn't have a bunch of applications on it so you don't have to look at stuff that you don't really want to see. Now if you want to manually update your television, you go down here to system and then you go to about and this is where you would look for updates. You can also go to reset and this is where you would factory reset the television if you're selling it to someone or you need to clear everything out. Pretty much all Hisense that has Google TV has ambient mode and you can go to Google Photos and you can upload your family pictures to it. So once you enter your password, you can see all the pictures on your account and then you can use those as screen savers if you need it to. There's also a built-in art gallery and you can select from these different ones that are installed in here. You also can customize the weather by Fahrenheit or Celsius, your time, and these things will appear on the screen if you set them up. And this gives you an idea of what it would look like. If you want to change the screensaver, again, you can go down here to the bottom to Art Gallery, and you can change that different screensaver. And as you notice, the clock is on the screen. I can go in and toggle that off in that settings that I just showed you. Under Power and Energy, this is where you can choose the behavior. So if you have a different streaming device or gaming console that you always want to have, you can choose Last use input so it automatically selects it whenever you turn on the television. Otherwise, it will default back to the Google Home screen. If you go down to energy savings, you can have the display to turn off at a certain time if you're not watching it to save a little energy. And under power, you can turn off that little light at the bottom of the TV. You can go to your sleep timer. You can even have the TV to power itself on automatically. If you have a smartphone that supports this little icon, you will see it on YouTube. You can cast that directly to the television. Under Apple, AirPlay, and HomeKit, you would go down here to Setup, and then you would scan the barcode and add it to your Apple Home. What that's gonna allow you to do is turn the TV off and on and make it part of your smart home services. And the last thing I wanna show you here is that this one does support Amazon Alexa services. So all you would need to do, uh, all you would do is just go and press on Setup Now, you will also need to scan the barcode and create a Hisense account. And this is going to allow you to add it to the Amazon Alexa skills so you can log in with your Hisense account and control the TV with Alexa. If you need the instruction books on this TV, you just take your phone, scan the QR code, and then you can access the manual on the television. And Hisense TVs are compatible with Bluetooth headphones as well as keyboards and mouse. 
All you need to do is put your headphones in pairing mode, hit pair accessory, and you're good to go. And while we're on that subject, if you go back to display and sound, in some cases, you can go down here to advanced settings and you can fix lip sync problems on most devices. So if you have headphones that are not pairing up with the audio, then you should be able to go in here and synchronize it. Now, how do you get the best gaming out of iSense televisions? Well, first thing you want to do is if you're using the Xbox or even the PS5, you want to make sure you go over to the TV and display options. One thing I would say on the Xbox, make sure you leave automatic detection on. And this way you're going to get the best gaming performance out of your television because it's going to set it up for the compatibility. Now, if you plan on doing Dolby Vision, you want to make sure you check these boxes on. And now we're set up there. Now, one thing you notice here is the auto low latency is not on and it's because the TV is not in gaming mode. So all you need to do is just hit the menu button or the three lines on the remote control and go over here to picture and make sure that it's toggled over to game. And if you notice that the auto low latency and the variable refresh rate is still not turned on, and the reason for this, if you hit the menu on the remote control, and if you look at HDMI format, it is set up to standard. In order to get all the resolution out of a gaming console, you need to select Enhanced. Enhanced actually unlocks all the full potential. And now when I exit out of the menu and go back in, you can see that auto low latency is now checked and if the TV that you purchase has variable refresh rate, you can then turn it on. Now I'm going to recommend that you use it for gaming only. And the main reason is because if you use the application like Netflix or something like that in the gaming console, it might try to use variable refresh rate. If you hit the three lines on remote again or the menu button, you can then go into game zone. Over the side here, you're going to see the different hertz. And keep in mind, the TV I'm using today is a 60 hertz television. And if you want to get even better performance out of this TV, you can hit TV calibration. You'll go through the setup menu and you're going to adjust all your different tones if you don't have calibration settings. There's even one for HDR games. And again, this is something that you need to go through for your particular TV to set it up so you get the best picture quality. So I hope this type of video helps you out. And I'm not sure if I'm going to keep making them. But if I get at least 500 thumbs up on this videos, I will consider making one for other brands like TCL, Sony. You have it. I'll see if I can make one for you in the future. If you guys haven't subscribed already, we're looking to hit 200,000 by the end of 2024. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.